Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a special team member today that came on board. He also has a podcast series. He has his own channel with The Advisor, and he, he is his name is Mark Amel, and he's from DMA Consultant, and he works with small businesses. He helps small businesses grow into larger businesses. He wants to see this small business person not get scammed by all those big marketing companies. He wants to see people be able to grow and develop into the companies that they always dreamt of becoming without breaking the bank. So Mark today wanted to talk about the customer journey. He is very interested in explaining how a customer how you can turn a customer into a profitable sale without having to do some of the things that many people do to try to gain a sale. He's going to talk about the right things to do and the wrong things to do. And he's also going to talk about doing micro steps, not jumping into certain steps that are unnecessary and will get you nowhere. So I'm going to give this to Mark. He's going to explain a little about um, what he has in mind when he talks about the customer journey. And he's also going to tell you a little about himself. In case you haven't seen his previous um, uh, podcast, he talks about a lot of different really interesting subjects that will help you grow your business. So he's going to tell everybody a little about himself now, and he's going to go into the process of the customer journey. Hi, Mark. So how's everything going today? Thank you for having me. It's going well. The uh, I started out um, as an officer in the Air Force. I brought the first AI project to the military. So I look at things from the, a programming point of view. I'm a computer engineer. So when seven years ago, somebody I knew was a great guy, had a 35-year-old business, found out that his business wasn't worth anything when he went to retire to sell it. I took a five-year hiatus, spent $70,000 working with the top marketing gurus around the world. And there was two things that really stuck out is I've got a guy that does um, Google Google ads, and but they spend a million dollars a month doing it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, a small business can't do that. But so I took those lessons. And then the next person, but it, it's always they do two or three things, but they throw a lot of money at it. Right. So I actually came up with 30 different areas of marketing and I took it where each piece is affordable to a small business. So when I go into a small business, I look at what's working, what's not working. And I look at the pieces to put in in the right order so that it's a low risk low cost solution. And it it all starts with how fast, you know, how fast do you want to grow your money your business is how much money do you want to spend on it? Right. So you can you can go a low risk way and take a while and grow a nice steady business. And that's that's great. You know, if you're looking at I want to have I want to cash out my business in two years at $10 million, then you're going to need some more money to put into the marketing, but you can still do it the right way. Um, you know, I, I feel it's so important that people understand the, the ways that, um, you know, you need to work with a consumer to make a sale. You know, there's so many times, like I won't say the names, but there are, there are a lot of people who will call me and try to make me purchase a certain service or a certain type of event they're doing. But they're so aggressive and they're so persistent that it's actually a turnoff. And you know what? There are some things that I liked that I could have actually, you know, agreed to do but it was the way they approached me. Like they didn't take those micro steps that you were talking to me earlier before we got on. They just jumped in it and they were so forceful and not friendly. And they just want, it seemed like they just wanted your money and that was it. They didn't care about the person. They showed no empathy. No, they didn't want to know anything about the business really. They just wanted that sale. And instead of making that sale with me, I ended up hanging up. Because, you know, they could have had me as a customer, but it was the way they approached me. They didn't do those micro steps like you were talking about. They jumped over all those steps. 
they didn't they didn't show any care about m me, my business, who I was, what I needed. They just went right for the sale and right for wanting my my money and my credit card number. And that was a turnoff to me. That was like, I'm not going to benefit from these people. I don't trust these people. These people just want my money and that's all they want. They're not going to benefit me in the long run. And, you know, I see a lot of people doing that nowadays and you know, maybe you could shed some light on, on people on, you know, if they have a business, you know, those micro steps, how, you know, how do they need to approach possible potential customers in order to make the sales? Because some people, you know, that, you know, nowadays you have so many people calling up trying to make sales, you know, people are not getting personal and, you know, they, you really want to know who you're working with. You want to know their qualifications. You want to know why they want to work with you, why they care, and you want to build that communication that we've talked about in previous, you know, podcasts. And then you build that trust, you build that communication, and then you really know that that person cares and you're willing to take time to actually make that purchase because now you know you have someone on your side that's going to try to help you. You know, maybe you can explain that journey of, and also maybe go into the right and the wrong way to do it because I see a lot of wrongness, you know? <laughs> There is, and you know, I spent. Someone wanted to sell me SEO, and I was as I was evaluating companies, and it took me four and a half hours to get through all their smoke and mirrors to figure out that's all they did was SEO. Yeah, what they do is take a business and put it into the template. There was no customizing because it was more efficient for them to just well, this is the way we do it, right? No rhyme or reason, and. You know, we've both been to those sales classes where they they teach you how to push that customer into a sale and you can feel it. But the way times are changing, you know, back when I was a kid, you know, 100 years ago, it was <laughs> um, you would go into a store, you would talk to your local businessman if you wanted something and they would ask you what, you know, what issue you were trying to solve. Nowadays, you have to do it differently with all the technology and not actually talking face to face. Right. So what I like to do is, even if you have a big business, like marketing can affect, you know, lots of industries, you know, every industry. Yeah. I try to always talk in a niche. You know, if I'm going to go for accountants, I talk about tax season. I talk about um, the documentation they need, how do they track it? You know, I talk to see what their problems are. Right. In my initial template that I send out, questionnaire I send out, I ask them, what are your customers' top 10 pain points? What is keeping them up at night? So if you talk to them about something that resonates with them, and we do it through a series of emails, looking at that pain point, see which ones get opened. Um you want to you want to show that person that you understand their problem right and then you want to get their trust by showing them that there is a solution out there and that you understand there's a solution and that you have a solution for them before you even start talking about okay give me your credit card <laughs> you know you you want to yeah. get them to feel like you've got a solution and you want to make them feel like your solution is better than everybody else's. Right. You know, Jack, in the old days when they were talking about, you know, apples, well, we've got this great orchard and we're talking about how good the apples are and things, but it, it's not, you know, it's kind of the same thing. You want to explain why you can help them and get them to acknowledge that, then get them on a Zoom call. There's with this technology now for, with Zoom, you can look face to face with people around the world. Yeah. And there's no reason to just get on a phone call. I had, you know, a short example. I had a person that wanted to talk to me and I got into a Zoom call and they says, oh, my camera's not working. But they had on the logo this very pretty Asian lady and the voice did not match that. And I was like, <laughs> That's all right. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't be honest to the from the start, and you want to be genuine, and you can show that there was a lady that said I wanted to use ChatGPT to rewrite my emails because she was born in can French 
Canadian and she didn't want, she thought people were being put off by her accent. And I said, what happens when they get these emails and then they decide they want to talk to you in person and you have your, you know, accent, she did speak English. Well, Mm -hmm. they're going to look, they're going to feel like they've been fooled. Yeah. You know, your authentic self has to come across. Right. But in getting to that customer journey, you know, look at what your customers are going through. You know, they're, they're not, you know, there's a certain percentage maybe that are looking for that expensive chandelier, right? But right. Um, if your customer base is know them, what is keeping your, you know, for me, for this small business, what's keeping them up at night? Okay, well, they can generalize it into lead generation. And I say, okay, for lead generation, let's go in into how are you getting leads now? Right. So they take that, they take that step for their customers and whatever their product is, and they, they try to hit those top pain points. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I want to learn more about what you say. So now we go through an email series in your sales funnel. And when you hit that customer's pain point, they have a short email and it says, if you want to learn more, go to my landing page. And I love landing pages. Mm-hmm. And then, then if they still want to go more, then they can set an appointment. So you're walking them through that step. Right. Um, you want to see where you drop off, lose that, com- lose that, you know, that hand holding through your process. If you send them, if you, pay for an ad and you send them to your website um they're just going to get confused they're not they're not you're not answering their question you're not helping them a landing page has is dedicated to answer that one question right the email on and the example i like to give is if i need a i know i need a hammer for fixing my roof Mm-hmm. So I go to a landing page, it's got three roofing hammers, describes them, which one do I, you know, describes which one I want for this situation. And I'm going to probably buy it right there. Right. If I go to hardware store website and there's a hundred hammers, it hasn't helped me any. Yes. Okay. So you have to define you know, hold hand, where's the dropping off? That customer went to three emails, they got the next one and they said, you know, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You know, they fell off. Yeah. Look at that email and maybe restructure that. So if you're going along all these steps, you're going to be able to find that and build right. that knowledge, build that trust. On the landing page, there's a statistic. The last one I read, it could be higher that 86 is an 86 percent higher conversion rate mm-hmm. for uh, having a video on your landing page. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be much, you know. Right. Be, hey, welcome. I'm Mark, and when I want to help you with your marketing, right? So, um. It's getting there, giving yourself out, you know, and I, I'm really an introvert. Um, you know, I don't like getting out there and all that, but um, someone told me that if you're going to do a video, you know, just give yourself enough time to do it 20 times because mm-hmm. about, and just start and you know, the first 10 aren't going to be any good mm-hmm. and that's all right. You know, you're yeah. going to get faster each time, but if right. you don't get started, it'll never get done. Exactly. Exactly. And it doesn't, you know, it, you know, I, I hear a controversy where some people say it has to look, you know, professional and, and perfect. And some people say, just be yourself and let them know who you are. And I, I think it's a, you know, it's a combination of both. You have to show your professionalism. It has to be good, but yet, you know, you do want to be yourself and you don't want to glamorize it too much because then it's going to look more like a, info commercial and do you really want that do you think it has to be kind of like a happy medium i think it has to be a happy medium and also your audience you know if if i'm dealing with you know i market to plumbers let's say you know and they were out in the field working all day and i come in with a 
a thousand dollar suit and a tie on and and all this are they going to really want to talk to me yeah i mean if i come clean professional looking hopefully you know they're gonna they're gonna feel like there's more of a connection that i understand what they're talking about i mean there's there's no excuse for a lot of pauses um and all that but you know you want to you want to give that professional video but it doesn't have to be over the top you know me I'd be I'd be moving my tie because I don't wear a tie you know right <laughs> so, <laughs> I could think, feel that uncomfortableness yeah I think you know too is that you can create a video and then you know there are places like 5R that you can send it to and they do have a lot of professional people on there that could take that video and they can cut out, restructure it and make it so it's professional looking, you know, because you could you can create a video. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you can send it out. So they clean up the video and they make it look professional for you, you know, or you could do bits and pieces. You, you can just, you know, do the first, you know, couple seconds and then stop. And then you could do the next couple seconds and then stop. And you don't have to do the entire video all at once because I find that sometimes when you have to do the whole video, people get nervous because, you know, eventually you're going to make a mistake. But, you know, either you could have someone cut it out for you or you could do small segments, I think, too. And that could be very helpful. And then you could put it, have somebody put it all together and maybe put some background music or maybe even add some pictures in between. And sometimes if, if something doesn't look good, they could add a picture and then your voice of what you're saying in the background so they don't see the mistake or the turn that you might have made that you shouldn't have made and, and stuff like that. What do you think about that? No, I do. I use DaVinci Resolve. It's, it's kind of um, overwhelming, but it, it's also, if you take this simple like I did, and I take pieces and I'll put them next to each other for the, the film, but the every other piece I'll zoom in. It's like another camera's looking at it. Oh, so, very nice. So you don't see that break, you know, yeah. that it's coming at you, then it pushes back. Mm-hmm. You put nice background music that's not too loud yes the other thing i do is i run it through a program i use happy scribe but what it does is it puts a closed caption on it mm-hmm. a lot of people watch videos in the office they don't want to have it on you know so they they read the captions yeah so that on there and it makes it look a lot more polished the other thing is at the end of it you want to have an end screen that has your name, your company name, maybe your email address and have it leave there for four seconds. So they can pause it if they want to. Exactly. And write that down. That way it doesn't get lost. Yeah. And I think intros and outros can be very helpful for companies and it could also make people realize what their brand is too. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, the use of videos in, the thing in when I do on the video, it's like a YouTube video, and the same principle occurs is you want to get you want to define who your audience is and what is your what you're talking about in curiosity in that first five seconds. Cause after five seconds in YouTube, they can click off. So, you know, I may say, you know, small business electricians, you know, I want to help with your marketing. You know, and then the next part is more about I've been doing marketing for 30 years. I can, you know, I like to help you. And then you get further more into it. There's templates, you know, first step, second step, and then make sure that you close with, a, yes, small business electricians. This is why I can help you. You know, right. thank you for watching. Here's my end screen if you want to learn more. Or here's my calendar. Right. So it's. If you put it in that format and you can look at, you know, templates, you can also look at, go to what, Viteo mm-hmm. and look, type in the industry that you're looking for and look at all the high ranking ads and yeah. what they're saying and why they're saying it and think about it from breaking it down instead of them you know, sell them to you, but break it down. Why are they doing that in that order? Yes. I think that's an excellent point because, you know, you can't 
you can't compete with those big businesses, but you can actually go into your industry, see what the top businesses are and see what they're doing and then try to analyze and look at why are they doing it? Why are they using this color? Why are they saying this? Why are they focusing on this topic? And then, you know, see how, what their consistency is. What are they doing that's bringing so much attention to them? And then figure out what can I do in my business for my audience, you know, and maybe take some ideas from them and you're not copying them, but you're, you're taking some of the things they're doing and trying to reapply it to your business because obviously they're paying people millions of dollars to do this. And these people know what they're doing. So it could actually help educate you. It's kind of like taking a class, but you're doing the figuring out yourself, you know, and if you're, you know, if you, if you can sit there or even, you know, understand, all right, I looked at three of the top businesses and they all seem to be doing this and they all seem to be doing this and they all, they're all doing this and they're all focusing on this. So then you think to yourself, well, maybe I should be doing this for an, and focusing on this and then do something that's unique of your own you know, and, and maybe pull some of the things that they're doing and apply it to you. And maybe, you know, that will bring, you know, more constructive, you know, audience that likes what you're doing and bring that, some of that traffic to you. Yeah. You want to get the, the high points. If you copy their ads, you're only going to be helping them because they're exactly going to recognize that and they got the bigger brand. Yes. Um, There's something called blue blue ocean marketing that I would suggest people, you know, just Google and look into it, but it's creating such a unique offer that you don't have any competition. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a tagline. I am the only blank that does blank. You mm -hmm. know, and I use, I am the only digital marketing agency that uses over 30 ways to internet market. Right. Um, People think, how can there be 30? Or they'll ask the question, but I get their attention, which is the point, right? Yeah, that's an excellent point. You know, and, and everybody should have one specific niche, even if you wear a lot of hats, like like you just said, I am the blank that does blank, you know? And say that again, just so everyone um, can, can I, embed that. I am the only digital marketing agency that, has over that uses over 30 ways to internet market. So I am the only blank that does blank. Yeah. And if you can fill that in, then you know you've you've got your elevator speech in five seconds or less. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and that's so important. The elevator speech is, is one of the things that will help you bring success, I think. You know, you have to have your niche but you, you have to also have that elevator pitch and you have to have a good elevator pitch. And that I think will draw a lot of attention, correct? Yeah, it does. And you want to be specific, okay? Just like I had said, well, I'll give you another example. Um, if I'm, if my daughter's getting married and I go look for photographers, I'm going to type in photographers and I'm going to get a list. And I see somebody that says, I'm a wedding photographer. I specialize in weddings. You know, which which photographer are you going to take a closer look at? You know, maybe he's maybe not the best. Maybe another photographer is is better, but the way they position themselves, the way they market themselves, I'm going to look for somebody that says wedding photographer to have the better chance of having a better product. Right. So exactly. What you know, sit back and, you know, go out to the beach or the mountains or something and think about what, what you do that's different. What is your, and then think about, take it from there into what is your offer? Right. Like, what are you offering and for how much? Right. Um, I always, you know, you want to explain that in your, in your customer journey, that they understand your offer and why you're offering it. Right. You know, I tell people my background because I want to under, I want them to understand that I look at it from a technical point of view and how it works. I didn't read a book on social media and then just start implementing it. You know, yeah. I'm not trying to disrespect anybody else. It was just a yes, I get it. connection. But you know, I want to as an engineer, I want to understand how everything works. 
So in talking to Google employees, they spend over half their their budget on stopping people from cheating it and getting into the search engines because mm -hmm. their goal and when they took over the search engine market was to give the best answers. Yes. So if they don't if they don't like your answer, they look at your answer and they say, do I really trust this person or not? Right. Then it's not going to help you. So you want to make sure that you give those good answers. Exactly. Exactly. So if we could, if we could like, let's say step one of the customer journey, what would step one be? So people have it in their head and they understand step one. Define your target market. Okay. And then once you define your target market, market, what would be step two? You've got to jump to the end. What is my, what am I offering? Okay. And it's for these people. And the step three is defining all the pain points that you're solving with your offer. Yes. Important. Because it's, it's not, you know, in this economy and this changing, you've got a few seconds to tell a person that I understand your pain. I'm bonding with you mm -hmm. I've been there and this is how I can fix it. So you got those first three steps. Um, I go, the next step, what I do is I go into local SEO. Mm -hmm. People aren't aware that there's 50 to 70 different local directories in your area. And yeah. you can say, well, I go national. But Google uses those to verify your business, going back right. to Google. So I put it in there because it's going to take three months to break even on local SEO, mm -hmm. months to peak. And if you don't maintain it, nine months to die. Right. So I start right away with that. Um, the next step I do is the build their CRM. You know, mm -hmm. I have a, a CRM software I like to use. Mm -hmm. I build that because I want you to take all of anybody that you've ever talked to and then stay in contact with them. Send them a monthly, not necessarily newsletter. They don't care about what you do, but they care about tips that could maybe help them. And it's going to yeah continue to get their email open. So it's also the way of generating some money quicker than the other areas are going to take. So I go out with them, start sending them and um, seeing what happens. I went back to, um, I belong to Alignable Group and I went back three months and mm -hmm. said, hey, I haven't, you know, I haven't, Talk to you in a while. How's it going? Yeah. The next day I had two big sales just from people that said, oh yeah, I remember. I've been wanting to talk to you. I just never got to it. Right. By these staying in touch with these people, you know, my, my software business, I have 15 to 20 year customer retention, which meant that I could do take not market for 20 years. Right. So that's the point that you want to get into. That residual income is gold. Also, yeah. customer list is gold. And building that, you know, I had, I've told you I had a, the hurricane came in, put five feet of water in my house. I lost everything. Right. I had, my, I had my customer list and I was able to rebuild. If I hadn't had my customer list, it would have been much, much harder. Oh, for sure. For sure. So that is, you know, your customer, once you get to say a thousand or 2000, which sounds like a lot, a big number, but say you want to generate some money for a, uh, you know, holiday season, you can send out to your whole list, people that know you and trust you. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was thinking about this offer. Is anybody interested? You right. Know, and get that money for your next campaign. Yeah. And there's a lot of companies that have slowed down their marketing because they have a big enough list that right. is constantly turning over with, you know, working with them. So it, those are things I look at. And then what you have after that is, you know, you build, you've got to look, start looking at your customer journey, your website, and what is your website used for? It's used for your customers to verify you. 
mm -hmm. not to solve their problem, but to say, do I really want to deal with this customer? Right. Um, this company. So that's the company website. So you can start building that foundation. Right. The thing is, is to start getting reviews. Um, mm -hmm. Reviews is the second highest SEO rank, you know, points. And um, what that means is that you ask somebody, if you do a nice job, they say, hey, you know, this is great, great price. You know, I'm, you know, I'm really happy with you. Oh, by the way, here's a, can you click on this review link? I just text you. Right. Your review, because you're building up reviews. The second part that people forget is that when you get a review, you've got to respond to it. Yes. That person took a couple minutes. You made it easy for them to give you a review. They took a couple minutes to do it. Say thank you for taking yeah. the time. More people will then look at it. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody gives you a bad review, say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, our company policy allows me to work with you until you're happy. You know, whatever you're, whatever you want to say. Yes. I ran into one review that it was a bad review. It was a nasty review, but the owner got in and was equally nasty back. And I'm like, somebody reading those reviews isn't going to work with them. No, one. not at all. Not at all. It's crazy. No, you got to think about these things and people don't. And also, I want to make a really quick comment. I don't want to interrupt you, but, you know, Google, if you do respond to the Google reviews, they do rank you higher and, and they consider you a higher trust. If you answer back to these people's reviews, they like that. They 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 give you brownie points when you do write back to your, your people who took time to actually review you. Yeah, it's very important. And you can, with... You know, I have a software that's really cheap that I use, um, but you can actually link it to your website so you can have reviews on your website too that Google will review. Right. And after reviews, what would you say it was ne is next on the customer journey? Um, that's going to get them to verify you. Mm -hmm. the, and you get your CRM so that customer relations module so that you can continue to talk back and forth to your customers. Then you start getting into the lead, lead generation, which is your sales funnel. All your different, I like to take six, seven, as many as 10 lead generators, forcing them into the sales funnel and let the mm -hmm. sales funnel filter them into, yeah. good, into good people that you actually want to talk to and people that want to talk to you. Yes, so, very good point. I was testing some lead generations and I was getting 50 leads a day that were just falling on the floor because I was testing it. I wanted to see how it was working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you can you can reduce the amount going into the funnel. You can tighten the funnel. You know, you can make it so that you're once you talk to a few people, you know, well, this person thought this, that's why they wanted to talk to me. So you want to push away, you want to be clear. You want to push away the people that you don't want to talk to or that don't want to talk to you. Right. So the sales funnel is really the last thing people say, you know, well, I need money tomorrow. Right. And that's true in a lot of cases, but going, building your CRM and putting your people, everybody you've ever talked to into your funnel that's going to get you money quick, you know, the quickest way, really. Yeah. Starting a new business and no list. And yeah, jump into the, into the lead, go into the social media. There's different lead generations. Um, I'm kind of a fan of, of um, press releases because you tell them something about, you know, do like I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm donating a hundred free hours to a hundred you know, to a small business is to help them get started this year with their marketing planning. Okay, I'm going to turn that into a press release. The press release is nice. It goes onto the media sites. Last time I got 580 media sites. But the other thing is, is I get the links to CBS News. I put it on my website with a little logo and said, yeah, you know, as seen on TV or whatever, you know, right. 
is appropriate and you're starting to build that authority. Right. Very which, good. Which is something called backlinks so when somebody points to your website. Yes, and that's very important. People have to realize also backlinks are very important and they can raise you and give you more visibility. The more links you have, the higher your 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 website but people have to also realize that it has to be good reputable links you know there are a lot of people that just will go out there and they will buy links and they will do things that they're not supposed to and these links are low quality links and if you get backlinks that are low quality it's going to make it's going to make Google think that you're low quality so you really have to not buy links and focus on getting good quality links by doing it the honest way, by interacting and somehow getting a relationship with high quality websites and people who have those high quality websites. Yeah, they used to have, I still do have something called backlink farms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're paying people $2 an hour to link and send it out. And I know, I know somebody that was riding high for six months until... Google caught it and yeah. uh, people dealing with that backlink farm got lost major brownie points. <laughs> yeah. And it could destroy a website once Google figures it out. And it doesn't take long for Google to figure it out because they have a very tight system, their algorithm, they, they're constantly changing it and improving it. Once they figure it out, your website can go from being maybe on the first page all the way down to the 10th, 11th, 12th, and who knows, the farther down, you know, they they penalize, you know, people who do that, those things. And the, the same's true about, you know, AI and chat GPT. Yes. You use it as a tool, get some ideas, you know, just like you would from Google, people also ask. But if you're going to copy and paste an article and put it on your website, they have there's out there filters that can tell you if AI wrote it. Right. And those are, those go through why they're, why they're crawling, you know, as they call crawling, looking at your website, they're going to run it through the filter and say, wait a minute, you know, this is cheating. Yeah, exactly. Now, after the press releases, what would come next? Is there another? Um. For the customer journey, or did we did we pretty much we hit we hit all the main things that people have to know about? We hit. I'm going to take one second. Um, we took the three areas: your foundation, your sales funnel, and your customer referral. Yes. Inside, um, you know. We hit a lot of them. We hit, you know, um, we we hit, we hit, you know, and we talked about the websites, the reviews, the leads, the sales, the press releases, lead generation, going after those leads, you know, connecting with people. Um, yeah, so I think we we hit a really pretty much. If if people go go down this customer journey, I think their businesses will be very successful because you really you hit. The, all the main key points of building a successful customer relation and and really being able if 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 someone you know goes through that customer journey they're going to have a successful business yeah if you look at the the other reason for the crm and one of the things i forgot was referrals yes and up sales so there's you've already cut a piece of that customer journey. If somebody says, Hey, you know, yeah, I know somebody that does that. Um, and, and, you know, honestly, like when I was beginning my business after a while, most of my business came from customer referrals, you know, and it was just word of mouth, you know, and customer referrals is a very powerful tool. And that's the same thing that you mentioned earlier. Your retention is 10 to 20 years with these customers because you did a great job. They gained your trust. They had a good outcome and they continue to work with you. And it's the same thing. If they continue to work with you and they have a great relationship, they're going to refer you out. 
And if they refer you out, you're you're going to grow your business that way also. And the best thing about it is that you don't have to pay for it. You're not putting those ads up. You're getting free advertisement by other people boasting about how good your business is. And all you have to do is not try to make those macro jumps that we were talking about in the beginning, doing those micro jumps that you were talking about. All these steps are the micro jumps. All these steps is the customer journey, you know, step by step by step by step. If we do, you know, from what I'm ga gaining from all the information you just provided in this podcast, you do all these little steps and you take, you know, and you can't do it all at once. It's one day at a time, you know, you're working on something. You might even work on something for a week or two and then go to the next step, you know, however long it takes you. But if you, if you, Go along this route, or I think even better yet, make a plan, you know, constructive plan, you know, and and then, you know, space out when you're going to do what and how much time you're going to put into everything. You will have a great customer relationship, relationship, and I think you'll grow your business tremendously. What's your input? What do you think? Yeah, marketing gets you the leads, but results get you to keep that customer. And yes. It's... You know, they say it's five, 10, probably even more times more expensive to get a new customer than it is to keep an old one happy, you know, so take 20% of your budget and consciously develop that customer relationship. Yeah, definitely. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, I remember you were telling me last time we talked, you, I think you're having a class today. Is that right? I do on at. One o'clock Eastern mm -hmm. time yeah. today. It's a marketing class. It's an hour. And we're going to go through, you know, step by step. I'm going to have an overview of marketing and then invite them into my weekly workshops. But if they would like to come, there's there's a landing page called 30 ways to market.com if they sign up. And they can't make it. I'll send them a copy of the recording so it's not too late. Oh, that will be excellent. Or if they do miss it because they didn't see this podcast till next week, I update. I have one once a month that they can join. Oh, that's great. So you consistently do this. So people, if they if they miss one, they could either get a recording and they could also sign up for the following month as well. And so they can catch up and get new information consistently from you. Yeah, I spend between eight, 10 hours uh, a week on new training because marketing has changed so much that it has so many companies will just throw it into your template that they've been successful with making money for three, five years. But that is so far out of date. Oh my God, it is. And I think people don't realize that I've come across people in my own business that are still doing things the old fashioned way. And I had to say, listen, you know, you you had great you have great ideas, but those ideas aren't consistent in today's society anymore. You know, our our marketing has changed so much compared to what it used to be. And people's retention spans are not what they used to be. Everything used to be, you know, I, I can't tell you how many emails I get that are so long and drawn out. And you just I hate to say it, but I click out a lot of those because I I read I just see all those words and I'm like, whoa, you know, we don't have the retention that we had back in the day. And back in the day, everything was long and detailed. Now people's retention spans are so short. It's really like you mentioned, like the hammer example. Are you if you see a hundred hammers and then you see another another web landing page with three hammers? Which one are you most likely going to be attracted to and which one is going to get the sale? It's going to be the one with the three, with the detailed ex explanation of what each hammer does. Boom, you got a sale. You have to, you know, I feel like you need to be brief, blunt, to the point, very simplistic, you know, and it's nice and clean, I think. What do you think? Yeah, a lot of bullet points. Yeah, bullet look, points. Look at it and see if they want to look more. I think that's a great idea. The next step, going to a landing page, you want to have more bullet points and be clear and show who you are with that video. Yeah. If they, if they, you ask them for their email address, say, if you'd like to learn more, the next page, thank you page can be the webinar, which can be 25 minutes because by that time, they really want to learn more. Yeah. That's so then a great it's idea. Okay to, to give them a, 
you know, it used to be an hour, you know, hour and a half webinar, but, you know, now it's 25 minutes. We have templates, you know, structures. Right. But they say, yeah, because as they go down towards the end of your landing page, they're looking for more information. Right. So you give them more, but you also, along the way, you can jump here. Okay. Give me your email address here and you can yeah one. You don't have to look at the rest. So you can you can move those around. I'm starting to really make use of webinars, which is training them, you know, wh what their vision is going to look like. And yes, it's possible without telling exactly saying how, because that yes. requires individual customization. But I it's agree. about um the wow, yeah, I can do this. So the webinar, I think, is really important, and I'm offering that as part of my packages now. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. So tell everybody one more time the the uh, the link. I'm going to put that all in. I, I put that in every one of your um, podcasts that you've done on your podcast page and with the advisor. But, you know, tell everybody once again your your link to the, to the webinars. Yeah, it's 30waystomarket.com. You know, it's so important. I I think, you know, what you've gone over today was so beneficial, you know, the customer journey. And this will remind people too what they're doing, what they need to do and what they're not doing and they need to start doing. So th this has been a really valuable, you know, session. I think this will help a lot of people in, you know, and realize what they're lacking and what they're, and what they need to fix. And, and uh, you know, you, you can't really cut corners. You have to do it properly. And, uh, you know, and like we said, you know, the, the, the marketing world has changed and we, everybody has to get on bo board and, and make changes and look at what they have now. And, and, and you constantly update and I constantly update and change things. It's just the world evolves every day and we have to, you know, we have to run with, with, you know, how the world is, is rolling. You have to, I mean, it's, and you can be at the head of the curve too. LinkedIn has made some recent major changes. Yes, they have. If you stay aware of that and you use those changes to your benefit, be there first, it's going to help. Yes, definitely. And, um, you know, you also want to understand like the total view of it because somebody will come in and I can't tell you how many people have tried to sell me a, a CRM for whatever, however much a month. And I, you know, it sounds all good and it's good ideas, customer retention, all that. But when you ask them, well, how do you put leads into that CRM? They go, um, you know. <laughs> I, I actually had to take a class. I took a class and it was, a tw it was uh, over 12 hours, the class, you know, they did it in sessions, but, you know, it was to teach CRM and it was to teach it how to use a CRM because it's not easy when you first go into a CRM. There's a lot and, you know, there's all different types of CRM, you know, and, uh, you know, but it's it's complicated, especially when they have a lot of things that the CRM is a, a capable of doing. The one that I, I belong to is go high level and and they do a lot of stuff on there. So, you know, I had to take a, a class in order to learn how to properly use it to my benefit, because when a certain, when people have been running a business and they haven't been using a CRM, they really should incorporate CRM into their business because you you can keep track of who your customers are. When was the last time you talked to them? You know, when should you, you know, should I follow up with them? Did I just follow up with them? You know, let's give it a couple of weeks. And, and then when you want to send out posts, you know, you'll have different audiences. You could separate them, send out the right emails to the right people, and that will create interest and possible sales. So CRM is definitely something people need to really look at. And you might have to take a little class and, Mar I'm sure Mark can teach it. Yeah, I'm sure you're able to teach I CRM. I teach like pieces at a time so they can get started in it. But, you know, it's just like, I've, I'm sure I told you before my example that I get, I had a car come out, company come out, detail my car, and every month I get a monthly coupon yeah. or something different, whatever. I had a guy fix my garage door, fix, mow my front yard, fix my 
tractor. They both did a great job, great price, but I've never heard from them. I can't find them. Yeah. So I can't refer them. I can't um, hire them again. Yeah. You know? Real estate agents say, well, this is a house is a one-time sale. Well, it's not a one-time sale if you can stay in touch with them. Tell them about what what values in your house, what pieces of your house are going up in value, which where you should you invest in it. Yeah. Butters in the fall. But also, you know, please refer us if you've been happy with our service. Mm-hmm. Those those Pete, those CRMs for real estate agents, you know, are, I think are very important too, just like any other business. Oh, a hundred percent. And I like the idea of, of rewarding people and, you know, encouraging referrals, you know, and when you do a service, you should have something to remind the person that you've actually helped them and, you know, not disappear, you know, because you can't, like you said, you can't refer them because they, they never gave you anything you know, and after a while, you, you know, you, you didn't have their information, but also they can give their information and maybe they could offer something. Well, if you can refer me, you know, you'll get 10% or off your next, you know, service or, you know, you'll get this or that or whatever, you know, something that would be of interest to that, that consumer. And that's a great way of doing it too, you know, but you definitely. Gotta, you got to think about your offer. You don't want to cheapen it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But you want to think about it and what's, you know, what's respectful and all. Exactly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. I think this has been great. Oh, thank you so much, Mark, for coming on the show today. This is, this has been great. And before we go, are there any takeaways or anything you'd like to add through everything that we've gone through today? Is there anything that you'd like to share before we go? My la- my, one of my favorite sharing quotes is, you can't scale a mess. So mm-hmm. get your business organized and then you can scale it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I, I have um one of my mentors, you know, he takes at least in the beginning of the year, you know, and he updates it consistently, but he takes the first week just to create a strategic plan of where he wants to be by the end of the year. And he organizes everything, including previous customers. Uh, an I a plan, you know, and he was in the military like you. So he's very diligent and very organized, you know, and he, but he creates the perfect strategic plan, his trajectory of where he wants to be, how much he expects to make, where he would, how much he would like to profit by the you know, end of the year. And he did this amount last year. Now he wants to make this amount. So if he's going to make this amount, what does he need to do? And what does he need to change in order to increase his sales for that year? And that's when he starts making goals. And that's when he readjusts things. And that's when he adds to his business. And then he sees what he did last year. What did I do last year that I'm not doing this year? And he puts all these things together. And it was funny because he showed himself on on one of his uh, videos. He was he was creating his strategic plan with a bo- with a glass of scotch next to him because he needed something to calm himself down. But he was like, <laughs> he was creating that diligent you know plan. But those plans work, and it's part of CRM. You know, it's that's what um, I spent December doing. You know, yeah. creating that same thing. But even if you look at it, say you're say you've got, you know, two good customers, you're building it, you're refining your system and all that. What happens tomorrow if you get 10 new customers? Can you take care of them? Exactly. They stay for 10 years. Yes. If you don't have any, if you don't have procedures in place and the customer journey in place and they fall off or you're, you're not doing a good job because you're trying to do too many things in the air. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. then you should have just waited until everything is stated. And, you know, there's another book on stuck on ready. Don't wait forever. Yeah. But realize that if 10 people said, here's a check, you know, here's my credit card. Can you do that? And what's stopping you from doing it? So if you look at it from those different points of views, you're going to see how solid your plan is. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I, this is great. Thank you so much, Mark. I, this has been amazing. Now, Mark's website is dmaworld.com. That's his marketing consulting website. I suggest you highly go on there and contact him. 
he also he gives his phone number out he has email contact everything is there you can contact him and he's always open to helping others he has a a huge heart for helping other people and he has also has a huge heart for animals he donates to animals and helping animals and uh so you can see what type of character he is he's been in the military he he helps people small businesses become big businesses he he gives to and he helps animals you know what more could you ask for in person so you know Thank you those kind words i appreciate it Stacey. oh you're very welcome i this has been great i i thank you so much and everybody you know check out his his um webinar today you know you'll get a lot out of it i've had many deep conversations with mark he is very well educated in this field and he definitely can help you and everybody needs help you know there everybody does not know everything and there's always room to grow so let's start growing everybody make that seed into a plant and come visit mark today and his his webinar so thank you so much for coming thank on the you. show today and sharing thank you bye bye bye